Hello. 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 So I think we can, we will be able to start. I will give you again a few words about, about you to introduce you if you are okay. Okay. Ça va bien, on y va. Ça va bien, on y va, oui. On y va. Yes. <laughs> Come on. So, as, uh, so sorry, you, you didn't hear, but I explained before all uh, the important aspects of your your bio, and every everyone here has already uh, listened to, but I'm going to, to give some refresh uh, about this. So, we are really, really happy uh, to have Dr. Adizes with us today to close this convention. And it's really an important moment in the year for all the schools attending, for all the Ed Universal Scientific Committee, and for sure, for all the Ed Universal team. It's really a special moment really for all of us even it's, used, it's virtual, even if it's with avatars, we are really happy to have the opportunity to share this moment. So thank you, Dr. Azizes, to accept, to finish this important moment for all of, uh, all of us. Uh, and we, we, we have really a great opportunity having you sharing your expertise and your experiences. Uh, as you are for more than 40 years, uh, uh, you have developed, test, and documented the property methodology that uh, bears uh, your name, the ADSIS methodology for organizational transformation, which provide protocols for corporations, governments, and not-for-profit organization to achieve exceptional results and manage accelerated change without destructive conflicts. You and your certified associates at Addison Institute worldwide have applied uh, your methodology in over 50 countries and advised leaders of eight different countries. So thank you very much for being with us. And now the floor is yours. Thank you very much for inviting me to present to you my lifetime's work. And I'm very happy that I have somebody that will listen to what I have to say. And here is what I would like to present to you. Forty some years ago, I was tenured faculty at UCLA Business School. And I was the previously professor at Stanford Business School and teaching at Columbia University and Hebrew University in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv University. And I was doing well academically. And I was tenured. And I gave it all up. I resigned, although I had a wife and two little children, because I thought what we are doing is totally wrong. And I spent 40 years developing what I hope is the answer to the problems that I identified. And what are they? Let's go and look at it. Are we really providing the necessary education that the leaders need in the future? Not even in the future, the future is already here. Are we providing the right education? And I would like to suggest to you, no. And by the way, research shows that the luster of having a degree, master in business administration or all of those programs, is losing its appeal. The market is saying yeah, we are not getting what we need. What's going on? Why is it true? Well, let's start. Would you agree with me that I'm saying nothing new if I said there is change? It has been going on since the Big Bang, but something new is happening. Not unprecedented in the history of humanity. The rate of change is accelerating. Unprecedented rate. So what? Well, what happens when there is change? There are problems. Why? Let's go and find out why there are problems. Because everything is a system. 
even the universe is a system. And a company for which we train leaders is a system. All systems, by definition, have subsystems. And the subsystems, in time of change, do not change at the same speed. Let's take a corporation, a company. Marketing changes faster than sales. Marketing, we do some analysis, market research. We say, here, we have to change the price. We have to change the product line. Okay, it takes time. How long does it take to change the sales force, to re-educate the sales force, to reorganize the sales force, to support the sales force? A little bit longer. And how long does it take to change the production line? Oh, much longer. And how long does it take to change the information system, accounting? We should live long enough. And what takes the longest time to change? The human element. Because the subsystems do not change at the same speed, it creates gaps. It creates disintegration, which is manifested in what we call problems. All problems, may I suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, are caused by disintegration, caused by change. Look at your marriage. If you have a problem in a marriage, ask yourself the question, what has fallen apart what has changed? So the answer is, if you don't have to have problems, stop change. You cannot do that. You cannot stop change. Because with the Big Bang, time and space was born. Time is change. You cannot stop time. And with time, things change by definition. Some are trying to stop change. Some religions are trying to stop, fanatic religions, stopping change. Some political ideologies are trying to stop change. They cannot succeed. Because you can stop, but the world would not stop. Even if you're on the right road, even if you are on the right road, if you don't move, eventually a truck might come and run you over. Why? Because the world does not stop. You stop changing. Good luck. The world did not stop. Another country will take it up. Another company will take it up. Nobody succeeded. England did not join the Industrial Revolution. On time, what happened? America picked it up. So it is necessary that we learn how to manage change. And I don't think we are doing that. Here is why. What do you need in order to manage change? You have to decide what to do. You're at the intersection, you have to decide left, right, back. What should we do? The world has changed. What should we do? You have to decide. But decision is not good enough. Many of us make a decision to go on a diet. So we made a decision to go on a diet. You need to implement the decision. And guess what? I think it's still true because I got enough honorary doctorates to visit, enough universities to see what they're teaching. We teach only how to decide. Finance, how to decide. Marketing, how to decide. Supply chain, how to decide. Human resources, how to decide. Not one course, how to implement. And the implementation could be a big problem. Because the assumption here is, which is totally wrong, that if we make the right decision, it will be implemented. Because we made the right decision. What well, is the problem? We often make the right decisions, but we don't implement them for different reasons. So what is really the role of management? And I'm using the word management leadership interchangeably because it's another lecture what's the difference. Those people that take us from here to there. The role is to manage change, to solve problems caused by change. 
If you're not doing that, you're not managing. And I don't think they're doing that. Point number one. Because the quality of management or leadership is a function of how effective is your decision and how efficiently you implement it. If you make the right decisions and implement them fast without any waste of energy, boy, you're managing very well yourself, your family, your company, your country. No difference. Problem. Big surprise. There is no human being that will continuously, endlessly, repetitively make the right decisions without making any mistakes. Do you know anybody like that? Maybe you think they're like that because you don't know them very well. Talk to their spouse or to their children. They will tell you. There is no ideal executive. That's a book. And they're sending you, showing you the books I wrote about it to solve the problem. And the book says, why you're not an ideal executive? Why? Because you're human. Ooh, so what do we do? Does it mean that all decisions will be bad? No, 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 no. Why there is a problem making decisions in time of change? Because there is uncertainty. If I can reduce uncertainty, I'm making a better decision. How do I reduce uncertainty? Talk to people who disagree with you, from whom you can learn something. Because you cannot see everything. Our styles are different. We need a complementary team for decision making. And we are not teaching implementation. And how to do that? Here is the next book. You need to build a complementary team. So, how good your decision is depends on the quality of the team. And here is how you build the team. It's at the book, how to build the team. Forget the single individual running everything. We need a complementary team. But the moment you have a complementary team, what's going to happen? Conflict because they're complementary. We are different. You make decisions fast, I make decisions slowly. You see the big picture, I see the details. We're going to be in a conflict. So that's no good. Now the conflict is waste of energy. And the company is as good as the energy it has. So what do we need? Mutual trust and respect in the team. Why is mutual trust and respect so important? It is the formula of success of any company, any organization. By the way, it fits also a country because they work with six prime ministers. Success is a function of the ratio between external integration and internal integration. What is external integration? That's your marketing strategic planning that we teach big time. You look at what are the needs of the market, what are our capabilities, and how do we match our capabilities to our, the needs, the opportunities, what kind of a product, and what kind of a price, and how do we promote it, and how do we distribute it. External integration measured. Success is measured by market share. The more market share, the more integrated you are with your market. But, but what happens? As the needs change, you need to change the capabilities. The moment you change the capabilities, what happens? The subsystem starts disintegrating. Some are changing. What do we have now? Internal disintegration, which is a function of mutual trust and respect. The higher is the rate of change, the more threat to trust and respect. Look what's happening in America all over the world, we let each other through it for a reason, change. 
Now what happens? As you have internal disintegration, now we are wasting energy on dealing with internal integration, and energy is fixed. As you are wasting time on this internal disintegration, you have less time for external integration. You forget the market, you look at the problems. You have one face and one back. You cannot have both of them. Either you look inside, you look outside. So what do we need to do? We need to reduce internal disintegration, for which you need common vision and values. You need a disciplined methodology of managing your meetings, how to make decisions as a team without getting into each other's throat. You need the right people. What is the right people? People that command and grant respect. And who is the leader? The one that does the best in granting and commanding respect and trust. So what is a good leader? It's not what they know, but what they are. Because if they do not command trust and respect, and there is no mutual trust and respect in the company, energy is being wasted, they cannot deal with the external environment effectively. What makes a good leader is not what they know, but what they are. And I want to challenge you. Do we teach? How much do we teach to know? Versus how much do we deal with to be? Values. How to work with others. How to listen to others. How to work with others. How to understand others. Are we teaching mostly to know or to be? I challenge you. We don't teach how to manage change. We don't teach implementation. And for implementation, it common interest. If there is no common interest, it does not get implemented. Common interest of those necessary for implementation. We don't teach common interest. We teach self-interest. What's your return on investment? What's your equity per, uh, 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 increase? Thank you, Milton Friedman. Mutual trust and respect is a game. And there is another reason why it's important. Look at the development of humanity. Don't worry about these letters, P, A, E, I. This is a code. I, I actually discovered the DNA of an organization. I can diagnose a company and see what diseases it has, what problems it has by looking at the DNA. And then I know how to do it. Because really what I develop is not just transformation. I develop an organizational therapy. How do you heal organizations? How do you make them healthy? Because how healthy you are is what makes you successful. Because if you are sick, we need to continuously heal the organization. Because the change makes us sick. So look at this, what happened with humanity. We started as if you are Darwinian. A chimpanzees. Well, the strongest chimpanzee was a leader. Then we became a nomadic society. We got off the trees and started walking around. The best hunter was a leader. Then we became an agricultural society. Settled down. The person with most cows, most sheep, most land was a leader. What's the common denominator? Power, strength, the strongest, physically, or in assets. And by the way, that is what's behind colonialism. The more the land I have, the more mines I have, the more, the more is better, the more is better. And we are still suffering from that. The more, the better. I'm not talking about developing countries. Some of you teach in developing countries. You have to go for more, because you need to survive first. Maslow hierarchy of needs. First, your needs first. But developed countries, more is not more. More is less. Power, more, 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 more. 
Then came the Industrial Revolution. And what happened? The brain got into the game. Now it's supply chain and management and, and budgeting and hiring and firing and structure, organization, supply chain. Right. And guess what's happening today? Most advanced industrial society. We're moving beyond it. All brain. We're outsourcing the, the, the muscle. Outsourcing it to India, to China, to... I'm talking about the developed countries. What are we keeping? The brain. Look at the biggest companies in the stock market. What do they have? Uber does not have one taxi, not one car. Airbnb does not have one hotel. The biggest transportation company, the biggest hotel company do not have one car or one hotel. What do they have? Computer information capability to manage information. Brain. You can outsource. Muscle. Brain is a game. Intellectual property is a game. Knowledge. But it's on its way out, my dear friends. On its way out. We are moving to the digital society. We're talking about putting a chip in your head, connecting to the to the to the cloud, and you don't have Alzheimer anymore. All brain. Replaced. You're replacing the brain. There is even research that shows that our brain is shrinking. We use it less. You have a Siri, you have a computer, you have you don't have to use your brain. With artificial intelligence, it's going to be better than our brain. We are already starting to rely on the computers to run a war. The generals are looking at the data to make a decision. So what's the future? What is the future, ladies and gentlemen? From muscle to brain. Now brain is out replaced by some intelligence and by quantum computers. If we do not develop the heart, it is our future, ladies and gentlemen. All brain, all power, no heart. Nazi Germany, was not a fluke in the history of mankind. It's a preamble. All brain, all power, no heart. I challenge leadership education. What kind of leaders are we training? How much focus on the brain? How much focus on the heart? You don't teach them how to implement decisions. You don't teach them how to make decisions as a team. We don't teach them that the most important thing is a culture of mutual trust and respect working together. We don't teach them values enough. We teach a course of social responsibility experientially open their heart experientially like the students work in poverty stricken out of the city and lead there as their internship not to work in a company making this financial analysis as an internship no go to a neighborhood of poverty and help those people start doing something to get out of poverty that is your internship open their heart. There is another deficiency. Look at the education. It ignores the fact that organizations have a life cycle. Start up in a mama papa store or it is, you know, go go growing like crazy. Then we need succession planning for family to, to the to the corporation. 
How do you move from individual entrepreneurship to professional entrepreneurship? And how do you do when a company starts aging? How to avoid bureaucratization of a company? All these companies that appeared in the search of excellence and being excellent, where are they today? Where are the Xeroxes of yesterday? We don't teach, taking into account where a company is in their life cycle. There is a beginning course on entrepreneurship. How do you start a business? But you have to adapt the theory and the practice depending where the company is in the life cycle. For that, I have another book for you. To diagnose what is normal, what's abnormal at every stage of the life cycle. And then what do you do about it? Contingent management theory and practice and not one size fits all. I think I'm running out of time. So it's time for me to close. But I may make a little commercial here because I think the business schools need it. We already have about 18 universities around the world that are teaching the business. And I'm inviting any university, any business school that wants to learn this methodology, we will provide knowledge, we'll provide material, we will train you, whatever we can do in order to start improving how we teach people management. We have to revamp, remodel, reorganize our education because it does not take into account change sufficiently. And here are the countries in which we have representatives, people that know a business, they can teach a business or they can get you somebody to teach a business. Here we are, join the business community, I invite you. Thank you very much. much. Thank you, Dr. Itzhak Adizest, for all this experience given to us and share with us. You can ask if you have some comments, some questions, if you want to interact with Dr. Adizest. We have a few minutes for that. Yeah, I'll be glad to answer. We have someone writing some questions. I don't we have see. some thanks also in the chat. I, I see Thank you very much from Thailand. Powerful remarks. Thank you. It's uh, from Senegal in Africa. Oh, Samaharit Nagadev, Samaharit. Magifi, Magifi. Girajof, Girajof. So nice to hear that. So take the opportunity. Don't be shy. Uh, uh, Sudapon Soyodong is the, the dean of the... Um, uh, she's asking for... Uh, she's asking a question. In Thailand, which society you already contact? There's a big company, but I cannot pronounce it. It's a Thailand language. It's a company in the insurances in one of the biggest. But we have work, we have a representative in, in Thailand, Rangstan. So anybody wants to go, write to me, I will give his phone number and, and everything so he can get in touch with him. All of you write to me and we will really... The dean of the Diesel Graduate School, where we are in charge of getting all these relationship with universities, is in the crowd. It's Virginius Kondrotos who is on your scientific committee, and I saw he gave a presentation yesterday, and he was running a panel too. So he's the one to contact, but you can contact the institute, and, we'll, and he will take care of it. So anybody wants to know which company, you know, how to do it, what to move forward, and how to learn this more, how to get the books, everything, uh, just write to us, and Virginius will take care of it, we'll take care of it, we'll take care of everything we can do for you. Perfect. This is So yes, I, I remember you that... Virginius Kundrotas, the member of the scientific committee of El Universal for Eastern Europe, is the dean, the actual dean of the Adizes Institute. So 
you can contact him if you want uh, to contact him and you don't have uh, his uh, data, you can ask us for sure. We will put you in contact. Uh, it will be our pleasure to do so. And um, the days after the convention, the weeks after the convention, we will be sharing again with you all the main material of this, uh, this event. And, and you will find there more information, um, the biography of the speakers, the contacts. So this will help all of you to get in contact and to, to go forward. Thank you. And yes, Suda, Suda is, she is, sorry, she is the Dean of the King Mankut University in Thailand and she really wants to, to be in contact with you and Absolutely. to invite, uh, invite you. So. We would love to do it very much. We were in Thailand, our convention was in Thailand just before the COVID started. I was the last one out of the airport before they closed the Hong Kong airport. So yeah, we have an operation in Thailand. We have a representation. We have. We will be very glad to cooperate and bring people to teach in the school too. Thank Perfect. you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sudakorn. Other comments, other questions? Uh, I assume this video is going to be available for people to watch in the future, right? In your, in your, in your network. Yes, if you, yes, this, uh, this um, session has been recorded and if you are okay, it will be shared with the attendees. Yeah, and I would like a copy of it, please. Yes, for sure. We will be sending, sending it to you. We have Armida Lozano from EGADE. She's uh, writing something. We are going to, which, I'll have a question, which are the companies or universities in Mexico that you Andale. have worked with? Andale, I, Andale, for, 40 years, I <laughs> for 40 years I've been consulting to take the Monterrey, I even restructured the, comp I restructured the bank, they are our client, uh, take the Monterrey, and IPADE started to teach Adizas, they've been touching Adizas back and forth for a long time, but these are the two ones that we are involved with. Okay, great. <laughs> and we would like to get involved with more. For sure. Okay, we really have have the material. I would like to everybody to know this is not, uh, we have the books, we have the manuals, we have the videos for training. We can develop a whole program for you to train how to manage in time of change with depth, how to make the right decisions as a team, how to implement looking for common good, for the common benefit of our next one, how to develop mutual trust and respect with common vision, the right organization structure, the right distribution of accountability. The whole system has been developed for 50 years when I quit my tenure at the university to, the, to address a problem that I thought the world needs. So uh, we are very glad to work with you. Just let us know when you want and when do you want to start. We will be with you. Okay, perfect. Yes, Armida, she is working at Tecnologico de Monterrey also, but as you have, there are different entities. Perhaps you have not worked together for the moment, but... Oh, yeah, it's... I gave a lot of lectures in Tec de Monterrey. I mean... But Armida is from the, the business school, from EGADE Business School. I don't know if you've been working with EGADE or with the technical no, EGADE, part of no, it. I don't know EGADE. EGADE, yes. EGADE is the business school of the tech uh, de Monterrey. Oh, well, so, so maybe they're not in the picture, but I was there working with a rector who is... My, okay, so we are working with the top of the university. Apparently, we did not get deep into the department, but we will be glad to work with you, Amida. <laughs> Encantado. Good. Okay, perfect. Muchas gracias y muy buena su presentación. Aquí estamos para servir. Gracias. Thank you very much. Gracias, Armida, también por estar con nosotros. Y gracias a, al doctor Avises que habla todos los idiomas, yo creo, ¿no? <laughs> o casi. Bueno, yo tengo presentaciones en español, en inglés, en serbo y inglés, no hay problema. Vámonos. Wow. Adelante. Adelante. <laughs> Muy bien. Okay. More comments, more questions. Yeah, if I if I may. 
Sir. Yes, um, once again, I would like to thank uh, Professor Abizas very much for his um, remarks. Um, I learned a lot and it is really challenging when we consider what we're teaching actually. Um, we've been thinking over what would be um, the jobs for the future. And through this, um, we were thinking about our curriculum, but then um, questions that he raised are mostly about what we're teaching, whether it is uh, for to know or to be. Um, so Professor, <laughs> as you know about Africa, about Senegal mostly, now that you speak to all of um, and lady, so, so um, what do you think about um, Senegalese youth as they are striving now to be fully um, into the technology, um, the use of um, social networks mostly, um, technology itself being um, something key to young people um, as compared to the values of what is your... What is your, your thought about that? Thank okay, uh, Simon, listen, my colleague. When there is change, you have centripetal forces and centrifugal forces. On one hand, we are getting united. On the other hand, we are falling apart. And that's what's happened. Technologically, we are getting united. The world is really becoming one big village. The fact is now I can talk to you and you are all over the world listening to me and I'm listening to you. My God, I mean, this the technology is enabling us to be one. Very close. I mean, virtual reality is now, I can actually feel like I touch you. You know, they're talking about adding smell to virtual reality so you can even smell the other person who is not there. They're getting united. On the other hand, we are falling apart. The world is falling apart. What's happening, my friends? Standard of living is going up. Quality of life is going down. Our, I'm not talking about developing countries. Many of you are in developing countries. Be careful, there are two different places in the life cycle. America and Senegal are not in the same place in the life cycle. And the mistake is we bring the knowledge of America to Senegal as if Senegal is America. It's not. Copying the Harvard education does not fit developing countries. Your needs are different. Our grandparents in developing countries, America, Europe, I suggest to you were happier than we are. They were poorer, but happier. They had time to sit at a cup of coffee, drink something, talk, socialize, laugh. What's happening in developing countries? Three cars in the garage, big mansion, three times a week psychotherapy. We are richer, poorer in the heart. Don't fall into that trap, my friends. That's what happening to India. Don't fall into the trap. Don't lose integration. And that's a little, big lecture how to do that. I don't have time to tell you how to do that. But the principle here is don't try to cow. If you are a frog, don't try to copy a bull. You're not a bull. I, I, I'll give you some DNAs. Look. Developing countries came from agricultural society or nomadic society. In nomadic agricultural society, you don't do long range planning. The next season, maybe. You just harvest, you plant and harvest and that's the end of the story. There is no planning, organizing, systematizing. There is no law and order. Developing countries rely on tribal values to manage a 
relationships. Courts are less of an issue. But when you want to join the developed world, you're missing two ingredients, law and order, systematization, thinking in an organized fashion. And you know, Mexico, I, I, we work, I work a lot in Mexico. Wonderful people. Integration, warm-hearted. I love Mexico. No law, no order. Everything is a mañana. And you cannot compete with a developed world like this. That was the strength of England. What did England bring to the world that became an empire? Law and order. But when they left, we don't teach that in the schools. We don't teach that at the schools. Another one, entrepreneurship, thinking long-term, what are you thinking? We need to start developing. If you want to get out of developed situation, to be underdeveloped, and you are training people to get out of that hole, we have to start teaching them experientially, not only here how to look beyond one week, how to look at the long run, to be willing to take the risk. And how to not only rely on the interpersonal relations for the regulating interrelationships, which can bring to corruption. It's one manifestation of that. I know you, you know me. That's how we manage this corruption. Law and order. That there is a manual. There is a way to follow the manual without losing the heart, which is a big challenge here. Without losing the feeling. So you don't become bureaucrat. You're not just going by the manual. Very dangerous. This is very delicate transition. And I'm happy to help anyone that wants all the business schools to learn to these 40 years that they developed. I'll just don't, don't go in vain. I would like to share it so my knowledge doesn't go to disappear in vain. Join the business academic community. We will have meetings, we will have education, training, manuals, we'll give you everything so you can really do what the, your country really needs. What it really needs. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for the, your questions that uh, give the opportunity to Dr. Aziz to come back to these main messages and main learns. Thank you very much for all this work, for sure. We will have all this in mind and in our minds and in our hearts, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Take, take care. Thank you. Uh, so this is the moment to close at this, uh, this event. I want to share if I, if it's possible, I try to share my screen here to